Hey everyone, I'm Hoki Hoshi and welcome to a tuning quickie on grip tuning for rear wheel drive cars. Now some of the info in this video might be familiar if you've watched a lot of my other guides, but I figured it might be nice to put everything in one place and expand a bit more on the topic. So let's get started here and the first thing we're going to focus on is the launch. Proper gearing is the major factor in a good rear wheel drive launch, but first we'll cover some of the other bases to make sure you're set up for that quick start. First, make sure you have a good tire compound for your car class, as well as proper tire widths. Keep in mind that adding wide body kits if they're available can sometimes allow you to run wider tires, and max width is best in dry conditions, but can perform worse in the rain or snow. If you're looking for a bit more advice on picking tire compounds and widths, check out my mods and upgrades guide. Next, we'll head into the tuning window to take a quick look at alignment settings. Rear camber is a very important factor in rear wheel drive grip and sadly, although more negative camber can add grip in corners, excessive rear camber will significantly reduce launch speed and traction. So as always, we have to find the balance. In most cases, tune your rear camber for cornering, not for the launch. You can find out how to do this in my major tuning guide, but for a quick overview, you want your camber to read near zero under hard cornering and make sure your tire temperatures are somewhat close to each other, with the insides and middles being hotter than the outside. Once you've tuned your car's camera for cornering, you can often take away one or two tenths of a degree if you want a faster launch without sacrificing much cornering grip. Next we'll look at toe. Small amounts of rear toe in can help keep your car straight during a launch, and also keep your car's rear end from sliding out too much during corners, but excessive toe in will cause a loss of grip and understeer while cornering, as well as sacrificing top speed. So try to avoid much or any toe if you can. Finally, before we discuss gearing, we'll take a quick look at tire pressures. A low tire pressure can help a lot with launch grip, however higher temperatures are often better for cornering grip. So we're back to the balance. Tire temperature depends heavily on individual cars, setups, and driver preferences. So the best piece of advice I can give you here is to play around with it and see what suits you best. I often end up though with a rear tire pressure within 2 or 3 psi of stock. Now let's take a look at a launch with just these adjustments made so we have a baseline. As you can see, first gear bounced rapidly off the rev limiter, second bounced but a little slower, and we finally have caught traction in third gear. Our goal is to change that, but the goals are slightly different for different car classes. For D class through roughly B or A class, you want to be able to extend first gear enough to catch traction while still in first, but in A class and above in most cases, you'd end up having to extend first gear far too much to be effective. So in this case, we use first gear as a sort of burn or launch gear, and then gain our traction in second. This Jaguar is tuned for the top of S1 class, so we'll be trying to adjust the gears so that we bounce off the rev limiter slower in first, and then get our traction when shifting into second. Let's take a look at what a launch with the adjusted gearing looks like, and then we'll go into some more detail. And as you can see, this gearing setup resulted in a much quicker launch. We were able to stay in first longer and gained traction right away in second. And you may have noticed that I shifted into second when the revs started bouncing slower in first. This is the audio cue you're looking for. Shift when there is a slight slowdown in the limiter bouncing. Now let's hop into gear tuning and take a look at what I've adjusted. The stock setup here is still shown in gray for comparison. You can see that I've extended first quite a bit. You want to extend first gear just enough so that you can feel the limiter bouncing slow down with enough time to allow you to shift. If the gear is too short, you won't have any indication of when to shift and you'll often top out the gear. But you don't want the gear to be too long either. This is the trickiest part to get right in a rear wheel drive launch. Moving on to second gear, you want to catch traction right away in between the shift and have enough length in the gear to work through your power band. If the gear is too long, you'll likely burn out through much of the gear and struggle to keep the car straight. And if it's too short, you'll hit the rev limiter and have to upshift right away. 
In some extreme cases, you still won't be able to grab traction in second without overextending the gears too much. In this case, treat it like first gear and tune it so that you bounce off the rev limiter just slow enough to get that limiter bounce slow down near the top of the gear. Now once you've tuned your first few gears, follow a standard curve throughout the rest like you see here on my graph. Don't be afraid to go a bit shorter than you'd think on your last few gears. Alright everyone, I know that was a lot to go over just for launching rear wheel drive cars, but now let's get into the driving and how to maximize grip. Now much of this was covered very briefly and broadly in my full tuning guide, but we'll go into some more specifics here. Just keep in mind that I'll be starting off this section of the video with the rest of this Jaguar already tuned using the base tune formulas from that guide. So with that said, rear wheel drive grip tuning is all about suspension. But before going into that, we'll touch on a few other aspects first to make sure we're set up for suspension tuning. First, the differential. This is another setting that varies widely and needs to be played with. Too high and your car will understeer and be prone to sudden loss of grip. Too low and your car will feel slidey and slow around corners. I usually end up with a setting here between 45 and 80%. Aero can be a huge factor for increasing grip, and I strongly recommend adding the best rear aero possible, even if it means using the dreaded Forza wing. Damping can be adjusted separately from the rest of suspension, and can play a big role in grip. If you use the formula from my basic tuning guide, you should be set in most cases, but if you need more rear grip, stiffening the front damping or softening rear damping can help you out. Now let's dive into suspension settings. Again, we're starting with the values from the formula I use in my tuning video. Let's start by going out onto the road to establish a baseline and show you what you should be looking for when making tuning adjustments. Alright, so with this base tune run, the car feels okay, but it's a bit squirrely on the straights, and you can see exiting these corners that the car rocks back a bit. That's usually a sign of too much oversteer. I can tell the car really wants to slide out from under me, so I'm having to manage throttle and steering input a lot more in order to keep the car from losing traction. So from these first three corners, I can tell that we need to reduce oversteer a bit and definitely increase rear grip. Let's hop into the tuning window and start by stiffening the front sway bars to reduce oversteer and softening the rear to increase inside tire grip. Next, we'll stiffen the front springs to further reduce oversteer and help with that rocking back in the corner exit. Finally, we'll adjust dampening like we mentioned earlier to increase rear grip. And let's run those corners again. Here I can tell the car is much more stable in the straights. It doesn't oversteer on corner entry, meaning I can be more confident and harder on the throttle. And it really smoothly exits the corners. I definitely have a bit more understeer than before, but that's okay. Because essentially all I've done is shave off the excess oversteer that wasn't really usable and would have just caused the car to start sliding. The ultimate goal for rear wheel grip tuning is to have a car that, when turning, never turns more than the rear tires can handle. This does often mean inducing some understeer like you saw here, but just enough so that you can still turn in and hit your apexes without drifting. As with everything, there's a sweet spot that takes some trial and error and some practice to hit. Once the rest of your car has a good baseline tune, Use the anti-roll bars, spring rates, and damping settings to find the right balance between over and understeer. Anti-roll bars will primarily help with reducing drifting from quick steering input like corner entry and transitions. Spring rates are great for fine-tuning mid-corner grip if the rear end tends to start sliding out during your corner, and damping settings are a great all-around adjustment tool if the car is still struggling to find grip during any parts of your driving. So now we have a rear wheel drive car that launches fast and takes corners well and without drifting. So it's time to get down to the reality of rear wheel drive setups. At the end of the day, rear wheel drive comes down to throttle control, good braking, and smooth cornering. No matter how much tuning you do to speed up your launches or prevent drifting through corners, all wheel drive will always launch better and corner easier. Luckily though, the class rating system and performance index are often on our side. Rear wheel drive setups allow you to push more power and lighter cars into lower classes, and even though it's tough to justify them in online racing where stability is king, successfully wrangling powerful rear wheel drive cars around the track in single player and in the open world is an incredibly fun driving experience. 
so hopefully this guide, paired with the many others on my channel, will have helped with that. Thanks for watching yet another tuning quickie, and I'll see you in the next one.